Hello and welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And we just got the new Batman Dark Knight Rises on DVD and Blu-ray. Yeah, we figured, you know, no new movie coming out, no new CDs that either of us can think of, so time for another retrospect. There you go. And we could talk about, you know, a new Blu-ray and DVD. Yeah, I didn't think it had that much more on there. I mean, it has kind of like your standard stuff, because I'll say, like, the Batman Begins DVD, that one had, like, the, the special edition The special one. one, not the first one. That had... Or I guess it did come out the same time. The, yeah, the special I keep thinking edition. they did, like, the Sin City thing, where they're just like, we got you. Yeah. <laughs> you stupid fuck. We know you'll fucking buy it, you fucking nerds. No, I thought they were going to do that with Machete, but they haven't done that yet. No, Machete... Fox is just sitting there in the corner like... Who gives a shit? Yeah, that's probably what they thought. I don't, think, I don't know if that... I think that movie did well, but I don't think it did enough that Fox wants to put a second thing out. You know Robert Rodriguez wants to put a second one out. I, I feel like... You have the DVD. The movie, once it, it gets to... re-released... Because eventually, at some point in time, just about any movie gets a special release at some point. Because look at Road Racers. Maybe that like took a... forever to come out. That thing only came out on DVD like a year ago. Maybe it's going to be one of those things like a... Uh, like one of the special edition things that comes out right before Machete 2 comes out. Yeah, I can see something like that, because that's what kills. Expendables did. Like, yeah. that director's cut one only came out a couple months before the second one. Yeah. So. But anyway, but on this one, though, it really, like, Bad Begins, it had so much stuff on it, because it was, like, every little aspect that went into making the movie, just the long, like, the concept ideas, and just going into Batman's history himself, and it was just like, oh my god, they got so much on here, and then you go, like, Dark Knight, it's like... Yeah, you know, uh, we kind of used all the good stuff in the last one, so... Well, The Dark Knight just had, like... I just thought that one just had, like, some of the... I don't know, that that was, like, one of the special features, was just, like... Here's how it, I got the idea for Joker's music, if you give a shit. It's four uh, minutes long. Um, yeah, here's a couple scenes of what they look like in IMAX film. No, it's, you don't have an IMAX TV, so it doesn't fucking matter. And, uh... uh oh, yeah, the making of the, the Bat Pod. Here's a little four-minute tray... Four-minute thing, if you give a shit, you know. It, Thanks for buying it, you know. <laughs> we got your extra five dollars. Yeah, and then they have like you know these very like you know like the the Gotham like the fit they have like the fake Gotham news reports with like Harvey they're interviewing Harvey. Oh Dance, yeah, which is just kind of like you know you watch him once like oh that was kind of interesting. It was almost kind of like it was maybe like a fake news program. That's kind of like what they have on like the Watchmen one. They have like those um it's like it's that's like it's more like a fake like TV special from well, like the eighties, which yeah. that's actually kind of cool. That's that that's cool. That was cool that they did with Watchmen because what they did on that one was because. My brother bought that. It was like the, it was a double disc thing. It was not a double disc. It was a double feature thing. It was the Black Freighter, and then the Under the Hood story. It was, but instead, because you know, at the at the end of every chapter, there's how, like it would be like the, it would be just text of just uh, Hollis Mason's autobiography and uh-huh. all that stuff. It was generally that, but in the form of a documentary. And I'm assuming that's what you're talking about because you have the special. Yeah, because I have like the rape set of that. Yeah. Where it just came with like everything in one. Yeah. So, you know, if we ever come out with, like, a, if, if any of our stuff ever gets, like, you know, become, like, comes viable. And yeah, we can put, like, copy, just, like, the, the super, sp- we have the standard edition, special edition. The, the rape set. Edition. Just, like, <laughs> marketing's like, listen, we know how much you guys like to use that term. But... Really? Yeah. <laughs> the flaunt it. Yeah. Just the rape set. The rape set, yeah. So I always feel like that's like what my alien pack is like that like it's like it's called like alien quadrilogy or whatever you spell how you pronounce that word that's a word alien rapeology but it's really just like the alien rape set because you take the thing and it just keeps folding out and it goes out the nine discs long in a whole, book I see that it rapes your whole DVD rack well yeah you, well you put it out too and you like once you fold it all the way out it's longer than like a bed it takes longer to fold it out than it does to watch one of the movies it almost does yeah. but it's like you know, just got those super rape sets well. Well, anyway, but I thought the Dark Knight DVD. Rises, though, I thought that one, they actually kind of came back and said, we know we kind of fucked you on the last movie. Yeah. Because there actually was quite a bit of special features on there. I mean, there uh-huh. was a good, like, ju- it was longer than the movie special features. Yeah, yeah, there was actually some good stuff on there. Because they had that like making of the Batmobile, or they had the Batmobile stuff, which that was pretty cool. Yeah. I know that came out, like, on, like, on, like a History Channel or a channel like that. Mm-hmm. It came out you know, a couple months prior. I haven't had time to watch that one yet, but I watched the other ones. That one was really cool. That's I, I recommend that one more than all the other stuff on there. Yeah, that, that's the main one I want to watch, but it seems kind of funny. Like, here's the one with the Batmobile in it. I mean, here's the, here's like the Bat- Batmobile documentary. Is Batmobile really in this movie? Not really, now that we think about it, but... What do you mean? Well, the Batmobile's destroyed in this one. Oh yeah, I'm in the in the movie movie. I mean, they, got, they still got the, <laughs> yeah, like, they got like, the tumblers, but it's hard to think of them as Batmobiles. No, because the they're tumblers. like stolen. They're, yeah, they're all stolen. And they're in the camo. They're in the desert camo, mm-hmm. which they're cool that way still. But yeah, 
But uh, well, you got th- well. The, the funny thing about that, I I guess just because like when the time it was I'm made, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. But like they don't have like the bat, or yeah. technically it's a bat wing. But for some reason it's like no, just call it the bat because that just sounds yeah, weird, well, and confusing. I mean, well, plus there's no actual wings on. It's more like just a very big helicopter. Yeah, it's just like this like hovercraft. Yeah, it's like a, yeah, if you mix a hovercraft with a helicopter. But no, that documentary is actually pretty cool. It goes through all the Batmobiles. Mostly, it sticks to like the movies. Mm-hmm. It does go a little bit into like the comic books and the animated series. Just like. In the animated series, they decided to draw the Batmobile like this because they want it to look easy to animate. The, ba- the Batmobile from the... <laughs> that's pretty That's probably pretty accurate, you know? Oh, that's what they said. That's actually what they said. That's what they they said. said it all the time, though. Like, and that's like, animated series, they make the animation look simpler so it'd be easier to animate. What about that, huh? It's yeah. like, well, huh, looks fucking amazing, I guess. <laughs> well, it still came out looking fucking good, the simplicity of it. And I actually think that the like, Batman in the animated series, I think that is the coolest Batmobile there is. The Batman for that, that for the animated series is probably my second favorite Batmobile. My first favorite is actually even though it's the not Tim my, Burton one. Yeah, yeah, that my, Batmobile is my, really cool. It's not my first. It's not my first favorite Batman movie, but it's my favorite Batmobile. And then my third favorite is actually probably I know a lot of people say Blast from Mary, but the Tumbler. I really like the Tumbler. Really, I like the one in Batman Forever a lot. I think that one's really cool. I, well, I think the Tumbler it just looks so badass just because it's like. It's like a fusion of your standard Batmobile at the same time. A like tank. <laughs> the tank he has from Dark Knight Rises. You can tell he did a No, I like, like Dark Rises, when I first Dark saw Knight it. Turns. When I when I first saw like Batman Begins in theaters and they had the tumbler. I, at first, I was like, well, I mean, it's practical, but like, it just doesn't seem very cool. Like, it just seems kind of like. But I've actually grown to appreciate it a little bit more over time. Like, you know, I'm like, you know, it actually is kind of cool. I mean, it's still. I wish it could look a little bit more bat-like, but. The thing with me is... I mean, I, I know those Christopher Nolan movies are supposed to be, like, as realistic as you can possibly get it. So the idea of a, somebody driving a fucking it. lowrider around with, like, a jet engine on the back is not as realistic. Because <laughs> you ever think about that, like, with Batman? Because his cars are always so low, it's like... So what happens if he has to go up, like, a hill? Well, they're always so stylish and so pretty and shiny. My, my thing with it is... Um, I can understand why they went with the Tumblr because the thing about the, the Christopher Nolan films is they focused on aspects that the other films previously focused on. And I think, you know, he does have multiple vehicles. He does have multiple batteries. Well, the cool thing about the Tumblr, too, is just, like, they talk about all this and, like, the special features in that one. Is it, like, just how it pretty much was, like, a full-on, like, usable vehicle. Like, they could drive it through walls. You could jump it. Like, they they really, like, got it rigged up so it could be a total stunt vehicle. You know, they had that. I wonder if they, they probably didn't have it for that one. But I remember they had this whole, uh, the contest. I, I mean, I, I hear people talk about it now. But they had the contest like you could win the fucking Batmobile from the Tim Burton movie or the oh, yeah. I remember that you could win the Batman and Robin one through Taco Bell. I remember that one. I remember that commercial. And well, kind of, that, that's kind of funny because they only made one for the Batman and Robin one. They just really like, say we're only making one Batmobile. What about when he just stunts? Uh, just turn it to like CG or put a model. <laughs> I can believe it. I haven't seen the movie in so long that I can believe that. But uh, but the, but then like. I, I doubt they'll do the Tumblr, because that seems like that's going to break a lot of, like, you know, probably they got two full lanes just about or something. Yeah, I know, because, like... If, if you pull over for the fucking Tumblr, you're not going to, like, say, oh, I'm not going to let this asshole cut me off. <laughs> Fuck that guy. I'm no, gonna, you, uh, you don't win the Tumblr, you win the one from the Dark Knight. Yeah. Returns. I'm in a 98 Honda Civic. I'm not pulling over for this asshole with this fucking bat tumbler, you know? <laughs> no, you fucking pull over for that thing. If it has the missiles or not, you will fucking pull over. I, uh, I can see somebody not pulling over for the Tim Burton one because it's like, oh, it's all stylish, this prick. But the some people get into accidents because of that one because you just be like gawking at it, like looking like, Duh. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest, I wish I had that, but I would not uh, I would not drive I'd be afraid it. I, to drive afraid, it. I mean, I'd love to have any Batmobile. I'll, I'll say that. I'll be happy to have any Batmobile, but... I would be afraid to drive it. It's like, you know, I just like to, like, stand there and stare at it. See, know? personally, this is like, if I got a Batmobile, it it'd, be, creepy it'd be cooler to have one from the movie, but I personally wouldn't mind just having a replica one, because then I wouldn't feel yeah. so bad if, like, somebody, like, decided to try to kill you in it. Yeah, yeah. You don't want, you'd be afraid, you'd be like, oh, I'm going to, you know, go visit a friend, drive it, and you get, like, lost, like, in a, like, like, as one of our friends in San Francisco, like, actually drive through the Tenderloin, that thing, like, fuck, you know? It's okay, you just put, like, the shields up. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, that, I probably doesn't even have that. That'd be, you know, that's one of those things when you're a kid and you see those contests, you always think. Cause I remember like this movie's bullshit. You're like, I'll be able to go to school and I'll be able. To... Yeah, well, though, there's things like you always believe, like you know, when you're a kid, you're like, oh, you can win the Batmobile from the movie. Oh my god, you know, you assume it's gonna do everything because they're just gonna hand that away to anybody that with a driver's license or wins a prize. But then. But then you come, it comes to the realization that, like, oh, no, it's just a toned-down version or just a cheap replica. Because I remember, the, not, well, you know, cheap com- um, compared to the movie. But uh, then there's, like, because this movie's bullshit, but there's that movie Flubber. 
Oh. <laughs> and I remember they had this whole contest. Like, I remember in that movie, he had the robot that would follow him around, was sort of like the comic relief, and a spring yeah. would prop, pop up. And it was just. Yeah, you're sp- talking about the Robin Williams one, right? The Robin Williams flubber, yeah. And, uh, which is sexy. He's such a good actor. Well, because there's also, like, there's, like, the original flubber. There's the, there's the 50s one, yeah, yeah. The 60s one, yeah. And there, there's this robot that follows him around throughout the movie. It's kind of a sidekick, I guess. And there's a contest, like, you could win that robot! So, like, you know, when you're a kid, when you're a little kid, you assume it's gonna be the actual robot. And one day I went to his toy store, I just saw it was a little, like, plastic. Yeah, kind of, like, play toy. Toy for, like, 20 bucks. You know, even so, though like, Flubber, there's an original one, it does feel like a very 90s movie. <laughs> Well, just kind of reminds me of like you know even though I guess that stuff is actually like silly putty and stuff is actually old than that but for some reason it's just silly putty flubber play-doh all that stuff it just seems like that was like a 90s style toy like kind of like yeah gak and then like the nickelodeon like really when you think green gak G- is like it almost looks like something that like a uh, like it looks like a care bear loogie it's so bright and vibrant it looks like you know <laughs> yeah there what were those like one things where you could like make those bugs but creepy crawlers? Yeah. No, that was like, yeah, that was like you pour the, like... You pour, like, just the juice rubber, in there. Yeah, the, you pour the rubber shit in there, and, and, like, it was actually a very dangerous device. I don't even know if they still have this now, but I, like, I cannot imagine him selling anything with, it, like, it's pretty much like a little furnace to a child anymore. That's what it was, yeah, because what happened was... <laughs> I remember this because my parents, they, my mom thought it was the coolest thing. I was like, oh yeah, sure, it's cool. But I they, feel like that's one of those things that blows away like like older people more well, than it, it blows away children. There was, there was the one that was like, they had like, you know, it was like one of those kind of like easy bake oven things for guys though. But what it was, it was like, it was like twisted, messed up candy. Like you could make brains out of this plastic skull and, you know, just all like this whore like bug related it probably candy. came from like the easy bake oven company it probably came from that and when i was a little kid my mom just thought that was a hella cool thing i'm like oh yeah i think it's one of those things they wanted to see what it was all like and i was like okay yeah sure so i just went along with it right and on. i felt kind of bad they actually went and got the creepy crawly thing i was like oh that's cool They're like wait this isn't the you don't you don't eat these like no you just you just like you know pour the slime into these little metal uh slots then you put it into this oven which for like an hour, then you pull it out. You have these scorching hot things. I wonder how many lawsuits happen over that. I know. I just. I. I cannot imagine making anything like that anymore. I think I lost. I lost a set of fingerprints when I first used that thing. <laughs> yeah, because the first thing any kid does is goes to reach in to grab that fucking bug out and touches the hot fucking metal. Well, it's one of the. It wasn't even so much that. It was like I brought it out and like I stumbled for a second. Like, oh shit! You try and catch it. And then, <laughs> fucking chuck it over. It catches the couch on fire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, they would have different slots. They had like Power Rangers ones and all that too. Anyway, and then you know there's some kid that just thought that he just lay his dick into it. <laughs> That's his first reaction. Like, there's something boiling hot that can scorch skin off. Yeah. Because you just know there's always that stupid fucking kid out there who almost looks like a dare. Like, I dare so. you to put your dick in it. Like, I like how like it's always like the, the kids are dare. Like almost like kind of like the little rascal kids from, like the 1940s. <laughs> like. You ain't hot stuff. I dare you to stick your dick in that easy bake oven thing of my jiggy, you know. <laughs> well, I had a cousin who stuck his balls in there and nothing happened. Really? Yeah. You know, it's a silly kind of like, silly like spanky look turns his face. He's, you have the back shot of his fingers crossed behind his back. <laughs> it's like, it, it, when you're a child, it's like, why would he lie? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. It, it really takes like, like a kid like multiple times being lied to to really figure out like oh he's making this he's shit a fucking up prick. Yeah. <laughs> he's a fucking dick why do I hang out with him oh he's got a fucking Sega Saturn that's the reason why exactly <laughs> no there's always that one kid like lives across the street like why do you guys hate each other why do you hang out well I have a Nintendo 64 he has a Sega Saturn so really <laughs> really we have to there, there's kid. the only you know we can't just go down to the law office yeah. and you know Make some cash to come home and buy ourselves everything. I have a, I have the Slave One. He has the Millennium Falcon. It's kind of how like, are we supposed to play Star Wars without yeah, it? Exactly. So. Play by ourselves. What are we fags? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we should get back to Batman. But um, Batman, no, I was actually, but like, does including the Batman? Okay, even though you gotta, wa- okay, you gotta watch. Oh, this is the question I want to ask you. You gotta watch that making the Batman or the Batmobile thing, because there's a person that they interview on there. Did I think? Is a man that has become a woman. Really? I do not think that it's a woman originally. Because there's a... Because I feel like when you see, like, these women, and they're all, like... They almost feel like they're super dolled up. It's like, no, a woman wouldn't dress like that. That's just a man who got a sex change. (laughs) No, you gotta watch it. Well, the Lana Wachowski, yeah. Yeah, just like... It's it's really weird. This person keeps coming up on it. I don't know who their name is, but... 
What, what's their connection exactly? Somehow, some way, they designed something in Batman, or like for one of the Batmobiles at one point in time. And I just can't imagine, like, when there's a, not like a sexist thing, but when there's a a woman that's really dolled up, no kind of overweight, a woman knows about mechanics. And she's sitting there talking about the Batmobile when, like, Batman everybody else on this shit. entire interview disc is all men. I just feel like she just doesn't look like a woman. I'm sorry. You can mostly tell that what from like a like mile away. Like, you're like, what if it's just like, you know, it's just like the bitch and they just doll him up. Like, all right, we're done designing this thing. We just take this to the back room and fuck it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Look, Chris Nolan's been beating down our Well, well it's funny because like, it's like. Prison. Warner Brothers locks us in this fucking warehouse for like a few months straight to build this fucking thing. What else are we going to do? We got to, we're going to, that's, that's. That's the fuck. That's that's the cum dumpster right there. Come on, just throw some fucking makeup on it. Throw a wig. Call it good. Well, it's like in that thing they get yeah, everybody. They get everybody together. So there's Christopher Nolan, Tim Burton, Joel Schumacher, Adam West. Tim Burton. Really? Um, yeah, everybody. Everybody who ever made a Batman stuff. There's a couple guys from like the original uh, Batman TV show. Um, I know the guy who created the original Batmobiles on there. Did Tim Burton act like he gave a shit, or was he just kind of like, I'm Tim Burton, Batman's Tim... beneath me, or whatever? No, he talked about, like, like Batman, like, yeah, I, I was so cool with Batman, almost. It, it, it comes across more like that, like... His ego... Just, it, it's, it's, it's funny, because, like, like, they all talk like, like, what? Everybody thought these movies were great. Yeah. You know, it, it was what's like, I mean, you look at the, when you look at the Tim Burton movie, you just gotta almost gotta think, like, we're in 1989, there's never been an actual Batman movie other than mm-hmm. those serials. So it's like when you think of it like that, you go, okay, well, it's actually not that bad for like in no, a no, sense the not. first Batman movie. No, it's not. No, I, I I give that movie credit. It's just more. It's not so much the movie. It's it's Tim Burton's attitude towards things. Mm-hmm. I think because he acts kind of like you know because he even said like in interviews, I never really care about Batman, but I wanted to make a Batman movie for whatever reason. And yeah, it's one of those things that like it, that's how I always felt about like the people on like the Gotham Knight animated thing. Mm-hmm. They just a lot of those guys came across as like. You know, I was never really into Batman, but I always thought, like, the idea of, like, drawing Batman might be kind of cool. Because here's what I thought about Tim Burton. I always thought that Tim Burton's Batman movie was always just kind of like, um, I thought it was, like, a good movie. Well, like, when I, I was, like, when I was really a... kid, like, I really liked it a lot. As I got older and came back to it, I'm like, you know, they're, they got, they're good and they got their, like, qualities about them. But they feel more Tim Burton than they almost do Batman. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. And plus it does, I guess it does the big thing, which is kind of like... I, get, I mean, some people say, shut up, nerd, but really, the big thing from it is Batman's killing people left and right in the movie. And I don't mean to be this guy, but that's something he just doesn't do. If he yeah. killed people, it would not... Gotham well, I feel like the only time you can ever have Batman kill somebody is if it was like, that was the only choice, and oh. like he didn't want somebody else to die. Kind of like on like, The Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, like a what-if type of story. Which yeah, well, not even, not even like a what-if type of that's story. That's not even part of the real continuity. No, so. it's not, but I still count that like just like, that's that, I mean, that's as real balls. Batman as you can get almost. I, I mean, still... if they had the balls to actually go there and he was forced to do it. Because I, I think that Batman wouldn't let a bunch of like children die if he could yeah. just stop one person. If there's only one way to do it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's also one of those ones like, it, another scene in like a Batman one is like in the Batman Beyond movie, Return of the Joker. Uh-huh. When Batman, th- like right when the, he sees Robin, who, like after being he's been tortured for three weeks when you really start thinking about that like That's okay robin has been like electrocuted tortured drugged and turned gassed. into a joker yeah and turned into a joker for like three weeks fucking this torture going on because when batman takes that battering he throws it right at the joker's head yeah so his intention right there was to kill well there there are moments in the comics like so was, moments. if joker didn't dodge that he would be dead by batman yeah. Well, that's the thing. There's always moments in the comics where he was about to kill somebody, but then somebody like stopped him or said, "Don't do it" or whatever. Like commission. Like there's a, like one of my favorite stories, Batman Hush. There's a scene where uh, he believes Joker kills Thomas Elliot, which is a childhood friend mm-hmm. of his, and the whole issue is generally just Batman just punching Joker's face into the ground, and like with an internal monologue going over why all the reasons why he should kill Joker, and then what ends up happening is. Jim Gordon comes up behind him, puts a gun to his head, and says, you can't do it. And he's like, why not? And he's like, well, you if you wanted to kill people, you should have started a long time ago. You represent something. You mean something now. So you can't kill people. And I was like, all right, I understand. But at the same time, it was just kind of like, are they finally going to do it? Is he, I mean, part of me kind of knew he wouldn't. Mm-hmm. But it's just one of those, because you're having such of a buildup, you know? But Yeah. yeah. But no, it's no one that's of those a good things. one. Yeah, that's a good story. But it was one of those things. Every so often, though, you're like, is he going to? Oh, no, he doesn't do it. Like he was going to kill Joker even when he killed Jason Todd. He's like, I'm finally going to kill that son of a bitch. Like, oh, never mind. I can't. And Jason Todd goes, comes back and goes, what the fuck? You didn't kill him. <laughs> I changed my mind, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you were dead. I just kind of accepted it by that point. Yeah. And went out and got another Robin, put him in the same costume once again. Yeah, I kind of quickly got over it. What's your name again? Like, Jimmy 
Tardis or whatever? Jim I don't know, I got Tim Drake. Yeah. They all look the same. They all have black hair. They're all boys at one point in time. Yeah. Well, actually, Grant Morrison did something interesting. And, like, when he was doing Batman and Robin the uh, with uh, Dick Grayson and Damien mm-hmm. in place, Red Hood came in, and he came in, like, all over. For some reason, I, I, I never read that one, but I thought it was Tim Drake and... Damien or no, Batman. It's, it's, it's Dick Grayson. Oh, that's cool. That makes Tim it. Drake, it actually makes it better. But Tim Drake became uh, Red, Red Robin. Robin. Yeah, and uh, he actually they, in that story they say that like what happened was because he he actually he's wearing like it's like not like the standard cool looking motorcycle helmet hood. He t- it's like the original old Red Hood, but he's wearing almost kind of a very old school style kind of like super villain outfit. You know what I mean? Which is something we don't really see in comics anymore. No, because they always kind of like... More modernize them and stuff. Yeah, they kind of get away from that too much. Unless they and, go back in time. And then he took then he took the helmet off and he actually has red hair. And he's like, Batman made me dye my hair black when I was when I was with him. That's kind of weird. Yeah, so I just think Grant Morrison really wanted to have him like, be an angry ginger. Yeah, that seems kind of... Uh, Grant Morrison, he's a good writer, but he does some kind of things that I always think are kind of like, okay. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like he has that thing, like, I really want to put my stamp on Batman. Like His stamp on his stamp I don't think he's doing them because, like, he thinks that's a really cool idea. I think he just wants to, like... He's like, I want to be weird and crazy sometimes. Well, a lot of his things he does is actually kind of like... Um, it's You don't confuse it. It stands out. You know it's a Grant Morrison story when you read it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess there's, like, some of the times, some of the things he does, like, I, it's beyond me, but I'm like, oh, it's Grant Morrison, he probably has a reason. Well, like, he, I almost feel like he has that thing where he almost, like, like, probably because he, you know, wants to be one of those guys who wants, he wants to be like a Frank Miller who can, like, really, like, do things, and it's like, oh, people will, like, this will almost change everything, you know, if I do it like this. My opinion, I don't think he has, kind of, like, the ego as Frank Miller does, because the thing with... I'm not saying, like, the ego, yeah. I'm just saying, like, the thing, just, like, more just, like, he wants to, like, he almost is doing things weird, almost like a Tim Burton style thing, too. If I just do things weird and different, you know, I can almost change, like, history. Yeah. Well, Grant Morrison does a thing, kind of like, well, well, we'll go on Frank Miller for a second. Frank Miller, I think what happened with him was he... He was somebody who had a who had a very artistic uh, view on things, and no one really looked at it. And then once he actually got some recognition, you know, for all the things he did, because you know before he was always respecting the comic book community, but he mm-hmm. got shit on by Hollywood. They changed his scripts around because he he wrote RoboCop two, two and three, and three and yeah. totally raped his scripts. Well, that happens and, all the time, though. That's not like a, like an uncommon thing. I know, but I guess going to that thing, just people saying this is a shit script. Like I, I did my fucking, but never mind. Fuck it. Fuck you guys. You know. So, mm. but and that, then that's when he made Sin City. And I think that's from there. He's like, I don't want anything to do with the film industry or any, any of that. Then, then all of a sudden he did Sin City. Like, you're a fucking genius. I am. Like, yeah, you're a fucking genius. I fucking am a genius. Right fucking on, man. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do now? The spirit. It's going to kick ass. Like, oh, that actually, that actually got kind of sucked. You should probably took some baby steps there. It's like, I, oh, fuck. <laughs> well, I think it's one of those ones, because like, on Sin City, it's like, people are saying, it's like, it's like yeah, it's for, like for the movie, not like the book, but like. Yeah. It's a Frank. It's like yeah, but like Robert Rodriguez is there to fucking like direct him along the way. Yeah, he has director credit, but it's it's one of those ones like you know who's really doing the real work. Who's the guy? It's Robert Rodriguez. So I think that he said he just he almost did that thing where he just assumed like, well, I don't need Robert Rodriguez or Quentin Tarantino. The spirit was. You should never use the words like I don't need Quentin Tarantino or Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> well, the spirit was one of those things like it was made like Sin City, and it's and somebody never, else's story. And I never read the spirit. He, I mean, he claimed to be good friends with Will Eisner, but I, I, I skimmed through, I skimmed through some spirit books, and they were in color. They were in full color, at least the ones I read. Yeah, or skimmed through rather. Well, I don't know if that's even like it, like if that's just like a Hollywood thing where they said like, no, 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 make it like Sin City. People like Sin City. Yeah, it could have been. I, 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 I almost see it being more like that than like actually Frank Miller making it like that. Mm-hmm. Well, it's also the only movie he's ever directed in this style was with uh, was that Sin City type. So I think, well, I know this area, and at the same time, we, there, I mean, it wasn't like just straight black and white with just blood here. It was more like it had colored objects in it. There was like, well, there was like some things that were colored. I mean, it had like it more had more just this very very harsh black and white tint to it. I mean, mm-hmm. there were moments where you could see some color, but there's some other moments. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Kind of, I mean, I'm actually going off. I'm going off like. The one time I saw in theaters, so yeah, but so. But uh, back to the Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, a really good movie. <laughs> we keep getting like sidetracked off that. But, um, okay, well, other than the Batmobile thing, uh, what you, the special features, though, they had some kind of cool stuff. I mean, like, sometimes when you get like those really big budget movies, it's just like, we have so much money. Look at this money we're spending. Look it. Look at it. Look at We have over a thousand extras here. When was the last time you saw this? Oh, I don't think so. Look okay, what? here's a special feature. Look at all. Oh, I'm going to be throwing money into this fire pit. This is how much money we have. Okay. We're not even going to use this money, actually. We we're burning it. I'm taking this blunderbust and filling it with $100 bills. Yes. 
and I'm gonna go shoot homeless people with it, you know? That's what's the way it feels sometimes if you look like at a Michael Bay movie, special features or something. Yeah, well, yeah, because sometimes that's one of the things you get like. Like, I, I like special features on, like, <laughs> independent movies, and then all of it's, like, kind of like those, like, old-fashioned, like, very creative movies. Like, movies that actually have, like, real special effects, mm -hmm. you know, models and stuff like that. Those are always kind of cool. Well, I looked at some of the character, like, some of the designs and what the character, like, what they were trying to create when they are coming up the costumes for the characters and mm -hmm. all that, you know? Like, how they... Well, they, 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 they had some cool stuff like that, though. Uh, they showed some of the earlier concept art for Bane's mask, and I think some of the Some of that earlier stuff just looked, like, fucking retarded, like... Some of it looked it, retarded, but some of it actually looked a little better, I thought. Yeah. There were some things, like, better, but some of those, like... Because some of those, like, was ones... That, I remember in some of the special features, you get these people that are, like, almost, like... You should never have people that are too artsy involved in movies. Because uh -huh. in my opinion, like, movies aren't necessarily art. They're entertainment. Yeah. And you get these people, and it's like, you see some of these drawings, like... I think it was... I think when they're talking about the bat wing... They had, like, somebody who drew up a picture, and this thing fucking looked like some weird squid spider thing. And it's just like, I think that's what it was for. It was, it was for some... When they were making the bat? Yeah. I call it the bat wing, because the bat just sounds confusing. It's the weird, it, is the, it is the bat wing, yeah, really. Because yeah, when you say like, bat, it's just like, I bat what? It, I guess you can't call it the, the bat wing, because there's actually no real wings on it. I guess, yeah. The bat turbines? I Technically, well, uh, yeah. The bat propellers? I don't know. But, um... Yeah, I just remember those, like, you see some of these designs, it's just like, that's fucking weird. Why would you, you know, that's, that's like, way too artsy. It's like, thank you, uh, go back and did do it. Did it look like a Sentinel from Matrix or something? No, it didn't look like, you couldn't even tell really what the fuck it was. It just look, looked like something that would, like, get you, like, on a foreign space planet. <laughs> well, yeah, I gotta check out more. I checked out a good portion of it. Yeah, I watch, I, I think I watched just about everything. I don't think, I think I watched every single one of them. I watched the light, the light and dark, uh. Light, uh, lighting and darkness and all that kind of stuff. Shooting in IMAX, something went about that. Yeah, like the ones, ones like on the. It's really weird on the Blu-ray because it's not like this on the DVD because I watch both of them. Because <laughs> at first when I got home, I was like, uh, oh, my Blu-ray player's on the other TV. Ah, I'll just fucking put it in the Xbox and watch it yeah. on the because I had a DVD with it. And it, it, that one's just in straight 240 aspect ratio. But uh, when you watch the Blu-ray, it's really weird because it goes between the 240 and then it goes to IMAX. Oh, okay. So it switches like which is that like. That the only thing about that though is if you don't explain that in the beginning of your movie, it's gonna throw old people off. Cause you know old people are like, "Oh, my TV is broken. Why does he yeah. keep doing that? I'll take this back." I bet you they're gonna get at least a handful of returns because somebody's gonna assume that it's broken. Yeah, I know so many people just turned like when they got angry when because every DVD came out on widescreen and they would like cause they wouldn't. It was just like a lot of DVDs you gotta help, but they just came in widescreen. Yes, almost like to look for full screen. A lot of people would always complain about it being in widescreen. Like, I'm missing half the picture. It's like, mm. I know. It's funny when you still see people like that nowadays that are still uneducated. It's just like, uh... Cause the remember... masses, as I call them, <laughs> yes. Those but, uneducated, silly people. But it's just like, whenever somebody's like, that's like, uh, do you... It's just like, what's like, I don't know. I remember in the 90s, they really tried to heavily educate people on that. Like, on TV. Like, they're like, Look! Look, you fucking idiot! This is Ben Hur. You've been watching it on a four by three TV. There is shit happening on the left and on the right that you totally fucking missed out on. It's just like get it through your fucking head. Like, make... Frank, we gotta work on the marketing pitch for Ben Hur. <laughs> well, it's because for some reason that was like the original movie I ever saw. Like it, I was watching it off TV, but I think it was like in the beginning of it. They had this thing that explained why. They had, like, explained <laughs> back in the day whenever they put a widescreen movie on why it's in widescreen. And they showed you, like, the comparison. Like, you see some guy with a stole, just some, like, greasy, stubbled up beard. Like, all right, for the fifth fucking time. Um, aspect ratio. The same fucking thing we've been saying for the last 20 fucking years. But no one's been paying fucking attention. Kind of like that. It's kind of like what's like, you know when you go to the movie theaters, right? What is it? Is it a square? Or is it widescreen? And everybody's like, duh. It's full screen. No, you fuck! <laughs> <laughs> but it's Buy like the, the Ben Hur special edition DVD. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got the VHS copy of it and it's in Letterbox. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, it's like, it's just kind of weird because it's like, it'll be in like the 240 and then it'll just switch to the IMAX. And as well as ones like, I know they did that kind of on the other, on like The Dark Knight, they did a thing where they shot like a handful, I think they shot like three or four scenes in IMAX. In this movie, they shot like half the movie in IMAX. Mm -hmm. Like whenever it was, it's a pretty big scene, they shoot in IMAX. This movie has a lot of big scenes. Well, it's also one's like, why don't they just like make the entire movie in, in IMAX? 
and just make it like a war because I think IMAX is like one seventy something, like seventy three. It's got like a weird aspect ratio. Yeah. But just make it like that because that would just fit perfectly on a widescreen TV. Because like whenever you see the like the on the Blu-ray, the IMAX scenes look really fucking awesome though. Mm-hmm. Like they are really crystal clear looking. You know, it's probably one of the best Blu-rays I've ever seen. But it's just kind of weird because I'm still this peasant with like yeah, you, you got the the DVD features, yeah, 480p, no IMAX. Scenes. I'm the guy that's getting shot with a blunderbuss with 100 dollar bills, yeah. <laughs> but no, the picture quality was really fucking amazing on that one. But I still want to say though, it's just like I, I I like that movie, but I just really like watching it though. You're like it, it's good. But I just wish it was more Batman-y. It's just not... I watched it I, I watched it about three times, roughly, since I got it. I watched it... When I first got it, because I had it somewhere I had to be, I, wa- I watched about, like, 45 minutes of it. I skimmed through my favorite parts. Mm-hmm. Primarily the whole... When Batman first comes in, and he uh, goes up against Bane. And the, well, not really goes up against Bane. Bane. Bane takes the stock exchange, and they have the whole chase through there. It's kind of like Dark Knight Returns right there, I thought. Mm-hmm. And they come to the, then the, then the very end. And then I watched the movie t- uh, twice throughout the week, like completely full through. And um, I like it more the more I saw it. But it's one of those things. I'm still with you. My my opinions still stay the same. I'm trying to. I'm taking it more at face value. Yeah. Of it being, you know, it's a movie. It's not the comics. That's why I, I look at it like that. But I, I guess the thing too is like it's just like in my opinion, there's just not enough Batman in it too. Like uh, by watching it again, it's just like. He's just not in the costume very much in that movie. Yeah. You know, it, it's he's only in, like, I mean, if for, for like a two and a half hour long movie, he's in the costume for maybe about a little over, like, 40 minutes. Yeah. He's in it for about, like, there's there's this, there's a scene with the stock exchange, which that's, and that kind of goes on through, like, him meeting Catwoman, and then he, you know, the whole, like, mm-hmm. up to the part where he's like, so that's what that's like, when she, like, yeah. disappears, and that's... That's pro- I'm not gonna do all the math. That that's a fairly long scene. Then you got the scene where he meets up with Catwoman. And he gets his ass kicked by Bane. Yeah, that's a long scene. But and know, then the costumes off for quite a while from and that. And then point. It, from then the, then he puts the costume on the last forty minutes of the movie, like thirty minutes of the movie. Right? Yeah. So. So it's like there's not. I mean, that's the only thing. Just just for how long it is. Because the thing about Batman, I don't, don't want to go like the Batman philosophy, but it's just like Batman's almost more in his costume. That he is, like, in anything else. Mm-hmm. That costume's like a life force of him. Well, I guess it kind of varies. I mean, because he's in the costume a lot. I mean, the comics, we primarily focus see him in the costume because that's what people read the comics for. Well, that's just... But, but if you see the... If you read if the old cartoons... I remember we saw him as Bruce Wayne quite a lot. I mean, costume first and foremost, but we saw him in the... We saw. Oh, him, you, well, you we see him a lot. Him. I mean, like, I'm not saying you don't see him as Bruce Wayne. I'm just saying, like, he's three-fourths Batman, mm-hmm. one-fourth Bruce Wayne. Well, and I feel like in this movie... He's one fourth Batman, three fourths Bruce Wayne. And the movie's more about Bruce Wayne just coming to an end. And here's the thing: a lot of people are going to complain about like Batman took an eight year break and Batman wouldn't. Quit and it's like the okay, scene. like the more I watch and it, I, I kind of thought about. It. I'm like, well, you know what? The thing is, the main reason he kind of took an eight year break is he kind of defeated what he needed to be done. But the thing was is that he's been just broken and battered. Yeah. That's the thing. It's just like, and it's almost like I, I see where they're coming because, like, you know, the comic books you think about. It's like Batman's just been like pretty much almost like he's like Jackie Chan. He's broken every single bone in his body and keeps going up. But it's like in real life, you know, this guy just he can only take so much abuse to that body. And at the same time, well, here's the one thing I'm gonna just call a little bit of bullshit on this. I'm not gonna make a big thing of it, but we'll call a little bit of bullshit. They say, well, you know, that that fall he took at the end of Dark Knight, yeah, that fucked up his leg, and it's kind of like I see what you're saying, but he was set on fire. And thrown out a building, and Batman begins and landed on a car. Yeah. So you know <laughs> that fall, like that two story fall. Yeah, and bro, and like yeah, while uh, while on fire. So it's one of those things. Like I kind of get their saying. I think more than anything, it doesn't bother me that much because I mean, as, as a Batman fan, like I mean, if, as a Batman fan, you really like you like really Batman would 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 still keep fighting if he if he had to fight crime in a wheelchair, he would keep doing it. Yeah, but I think what they're trying to do is like, all right, well, this gives us a reason to take from Dark Knight Returns. And at the same time, I think it also gave him a, a reason to bring in a plot hole. So like, okay, well, at some point he went to an orphanage and like winked at this kid, and that kid realized. Yeah, that, that part. Okay, because I, I guess when I, just, when I watched it in theaters, I didn't think much of that part. But when I look at it now, it's like that. That that is like one of the war- that could be. So, uh, I think that, I think what it would have been better is if there was like this flashback, maybe at the very beginning of the movie, where a kid just saw Batman maybe like putting on his mask and saw it, got got a glimpse of his face that he was Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Like, something like that would have been a lot more realistic than just, like, yeah, I, I fucking know it. 
I know a Batman when I see it anywhere. He gave them the yo know, Batman look. Yeah, just like that. That 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 was one. Like, that, I, I, that was one of those ones. Like somebody must have just said, like, "Fuck it, just write it in there." We need to somehow get it across. I don't really care how it goes. Nobody's gonna put that much thought into it. By that rationale, like you know, there'd be a knock at the door. Like as soon as like John Blake leaves, there's another knock at the door. Like Oliver Twist is there. Like yo, I know you're Batman. He's like, oh, fuck. just close the door, opens the door again, and he's there. Like. I know you're Batman, bitch. Like, oh, god damn it, you know. You forgot like, to stop showing orphan. up the orphanages. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the only other thing, though, I really just wish that, like, I know these, these are these, like, pipe dream wishes for, like, a movie that's, like, you, just, like, you can't really do anything about, but I really just ones. wish that in the absence of Batman, I really think that the John Blake character, or wait, John Blake's his name. Yeah, John Blake. I couldn't remember if that was his first name was John. She's but, a fine character. Which because... I really think what he should have done is he should have did this thing. I think this would have made the movie way better. And it, it sounds weird to a comic sense because it would have come like from like a back or from a ahead of time background. But it would have been like he put the Nightwing costume on and he was deciding to be Batman while Batman was gone. Mm-hmm. So then Batman can maybe step in later and go like, what the fuck are you doing? He could have came across like a spare costume that was a little bit of a different design, the prototype. Well, maybe he just makes his own kind of like yeah. costume. Like not, not like makes it like from scratch, like fucking yeah. sewing it. But like, you know what I mean? He just puts together some kind of simple like kind of military, maybe ninja-ish costume. Mm-hmm. Puts a mask on. I mean, because Nightwing's costume is a pretty realistic looking costume. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't look too hard. Even in that kind of thing, you pulled off pretty well. He may get some like night vision goggles kind of Yeah, like he's got like some like military out. goggles and stuff. I mean, he's fucking a police officer. He's probably can like steal some shit yeah <laughs> but like if, if i think that would have been a little bit cooler in just as that batman, just yeah in the absence of batman we have nightwing well, and he my, my big problem with this going into the movie was when i walked I, you, you expect know, all this shit well, to be well no because i went on because i was i was almost like put it together like it was some kind of big conspiracy theory i mean it was almost kind of like one step away from like picture diagrams and strings leading to shit <laughs> and a I board was, that flips back over yeah like yeah. we got one side then you flip it over and this is the master plan i was kind of like one step away from that because i was I go on IMDb and I was I mean I usually don't follow movies that much but I was following this movie so much because it was like one of the few movies I was really looking forward to and I was just like oh look at this there are five people here who are who are, who are credited in the movie but they don't have names look there's a child that could be Dick Grayson in a flashback or it could be Jason Todd perhaps Damien who knows you know I'm just going like if someone actually I mean, this, these are things I was thinking to myself but if I said these out loud I'd be like are, you're fucking insane and then I was like look at the guy the, a guy from Stargate <laughs> the Stargate television show that's kind of a big actor right no one he, he, he's not credited as anybody like a fucking unsolved he? mysteries he be, yeah. episode yeah like he could possibly be like Croc he could possibly be like this guy over here you know maybe kg beast seems a little strange possibly kg beast you know just kind of like if i am so like you know it's all coming out now it was almost like this is what i was thinking if your brain was just would be almost if like, it was a fucking comic book and you had your inner monologue rolling it would be like one full page no like panels just the same like brick of you fucking like face into a computer yeah and then like and then like you know other things like look at this guy right here he looks like he could be riddler well, 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 why would they have this guy but not really you know just all these things I was just piecing together and it was almost just kind of like fucking scary you know when I think back on it it was just like all these connections thinking, well, but but now that I went to go see the movie so I'm sitting back just kind of like waiting for, plus another thing that kind of got me excited is either this guy was bullshitting me or well, clearly was, was bullshitting, bullshitting him. what? yeah somebody was clearly somebody bullshitting somebody was bullshitting the scene where Bane goes in and he, I, got, I have this actor friend and he said um, that he had a friend that was actually an extra in the whole uh, stadium scene when he uh, kills Dr. Pavo, uh-huh. who I was I was 100% sure was going to be like Hugo Strange. Mm-hmm. You, I know that Christopher Nolan was going to name Hugo Strange. I thought it was going to be one of those things like... Dr. Strange. Like Dr. Hugo, Hugo something, Dr. Hugo, and then they was going to say like, you know, they called me Dr. Strange back in the Academy or whatever. I just assumed it was going to be something like that. You know what I mean? But, um, they call, call well, like me, Hugo, like, you sure are strange, you know, just some weird, like, yeah, some stupid thing like that. Like that, you know, like if Penguin came in, like he's in his best Penguin suit, you know, <laughs> just something around those lines. Yeah. But anyway, uh, uh, the, he said that originally, well, it, it didn't fucking happen clearly, but he said that he came in and that the movie, uh, that like when he took the mask off, he says, what's your name? Like, well, like. What's his fucking name again? Uh, Edward Enigma. He says, Edward Enigma. So I'm like, oh, fucking Ridley's gonna be in the movie? But then I was like, oh, never mind. Yeah. You you look at the thing weird. Has it not been recording this whole time? No, it's been recording. It's um turned on to the single mic, though, for some reason. <laughs> so we've been possibly getting just kind of like just a blank, just kind of... Well, your voice comes up. It comes up? Okay. 
Let's just keep rolling. We'll, we'll know. We're we'll already this far. We'll know when it's over. Uh, I'm just going to turn it slightly. Okay. All right. Well, that doesn't look too bad. No, it doesn't Mine... look too bad. Yeah, okay. I think just... It, I forgot that I was using it to record dialogue. And bah- that, this is my problem with those kind of things. <laughs> so I'm not going to hold against the movie for, like, not, like... Um, for not doing what I would have personally done. Because I went in there thinking... Like, I didn't think there was going to be hundreds of characters in there. But I assumed it would be like, all right, well... It's going off the Nightfall storyline, so I'm assuming in the Nightfall, he breaks out every one of his major villains, even some of the smaller so just, villains. But in this one, he just breaks out regular prisons. Yeah, prisons. so I assume there'll be time for, like, cameos or something. I just, that's what I assume. But then, the only one I was right about was Tali Al Ghul. That's what, and everybody knew that going in. Mm-hmm. Who knew, who read the comics. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, enough about that. I keep on saying, I'm done talking about, like, complaining about Well, it's about like, you, you look at a lot of the stuff, it's like, like they, they get, like, a lot of, like, the small storyline things across, because Bane and Talia go together, mm-hmm. you know, in the story. And Ra's al Ghul, like, the, like, all three of those characters are technically all connected, mm-hmm. you know? So they get, like, all these kind of small things, but I guess it's just, you go in there, like, thinking that, like, well, it's a third one, so they're just gonna really go all out on it. And it's yeah. like, no, they actually kind of hold back quite a bit. Well, it's really, what well, the thing is, is, well, I actually want to correct myself real quick before someone else corrects me in the comments. Um, I said, I watched the movie again. For some reason, I remember the the police commissioner that was that didn't like, not commissioner, but the police officer that didn't like Gordon that much. I remember his name being Eckhart for some reason. It was actually Foley. I don't know. For whatever reason, I remember it being Eckhart, but whatever. Anyway, that's, that's correcting myself because I remember saying, well, then again, though, it also very much could have just been. They still could have just thrown in, like, a chick and called him Eckhart. Called her Eckhart yeah, for yeah. Dark Knight Returns. Well, just things, things, like just, that. The thing is, is, these things don't take, like, any effort to do, any mm-hmm. extra effort. Yeah. That's the th- that's the only thing I always just think about. It's not like you're asking, like, why didn't they just put this fucking explosion scenes in there where, like, you know, like, all this crap that's, like, would cost a lot of money. It's like, you're just changing names yeah. and... And I'm not, ask, I'm, not, I'm not even asking for, like, cameos from characters like Clock Keen or Action Freak or whatever. Or, like, Film Freak, whatever that guy's name was. Mm-hmm. But it was just... One, I'm not even asking for that type of shit. I'm just... I don't know. I guess it was just one of those things... Was, there were some easy ca- slots that could have been filled. And I'm not asking for, you know... I said this before. I'm not asking for Black Mask or Mr. Freeze or anything like that. It's just... I think there are characters that easily could have been filled in those slots. No, yeah. And it, it just small characters and just small cameos. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be like I like it a lot. I think it's cool. I, I just think it's just it's a, it's just a step back from like the first two. Well, when it gets right down to it, it, it does have about as much characters as say, Dark Knight. It yeah, just felt it, it more exactly like does. it. I, I guess this one's one. It like, just felt more like it because we get more of a Batman sense because he's in the costume more and it's. Well, I think Joker that's more, think that's more it than anything else. Is just I, I I think really what it really, like okay I I wish there could be all these little cameos, but aside from like that, I just. Wish Batman was just in his costume more. That's yeah. just the, I think that's like if there is one kind of mm-hmm. like main problem more than anything else other than like the little small things is I just either wish it, it's either one or two things or both would be awesome. But like you know Batman was just in the costume way more mm-hmm. in that movie for at least like he should be in the costume for like two hours out of those mm-hmm. forty minutes. Yeah, out of the two hours and forty minutes. Or if not that, I think it should have just been Nightwing. Well, I honestly thought for a while like this goes back to my crazy conspiracy theory bullshit, but. uh... <laughs> Or almost conspiracy theory like bullshit. Um, it was almost kind of like I assumed what was going to end up happening was he was going to be this John Blake character for a majority of the movie, and then because in the trailer they get across that he's looking for Bruce Wayne and Bruce Wayne's missing. Mm-hmm. But I mean, quickly in the first forty minutes of this movie, that no, he's theory, not missing. He's just hanging up upstairs. Yeah, first forty minutes of the movie, it, it that that theory gets debunked. But um, I assumed it was going to happen. Was I'm not going to go into all the details of what I thought was going to happen, but I just thought short and simple, he was going to be looking for uh, Batman. You thought maybe to like put him away or something like I'm the new hip cop and I'm going to put Batman away or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then when he finally catches up to him, you find out he wasn't looking to put him away. He was looking to catch up with him. Like, oh yeah, my name, remember me? I'm the boy you adopted eight years ago, and uh, I became I changed my name to Dick. I changed my name from Dick Grayson to. Uh, Whatever you know what I mean. At the very end, he threw on the Nightwing costume. That's kind of what yeah. I assumed would happen. It's more anything. He's more of a fusion of all the Robins and yeah, because he has elements from all three of them. And he and like Dick Grayson became the Batman. Became Batman after Batman supposedly died. So mm-hmm. yeah. and then also was a cop. Yeah. So and then he also kind of had the Tim Drake thing where he figured out mm-hmm. who Batman was. Specific Tim Drake had a lot more better theory on yeah. it. <laughs> You know, like Tim Drake, you hear it's like I, I can just see like this kid explaining it, like if you explain it to like a giant public audience, and so everybody's be looking around like, man, I don't know why we didn't put those two together, anyways. 
<laughs> he's some boy detective. No, he's just fucking observant. Batman is really rich and has a lot of stuff. Bruce Wayne is really rich and has a lot of stuff. You know, he's the only rich guy in town we stop and think about. Batman it. has a boy sidekick. Bruce Wayne has a boy sidekick. <laughs> Surprised we'd have put this together sooner. Boy, 60 years later, 10 year old boy put it together. <laughs> Jeez, really? Commissioner Gordon, how'd you get your fucking job in the first place? <laughs> He's all like, you know, they're all like, we gotta really work on our fucking educational program here. <laughs> how many generations didn't realize this shit? But no. Uh, but uh, uh, let's take a break from Dark Knight Rises, actually, because we've been talking a lot on Dark Knight Rises. What is. Uh, because this is sort of a Batman retrospect and Rises as retrospect. It's just all Batman. Batman all Everything Batman, Batman and well, whatever Some Batman tangent, you want, some you don't. Some tangents that come between. Uh, Alright, this is kind of a generic question, but what's your... Uh, give me like five of your favorite Batman villains. My five favorite Batman villains? Let's see. I know we're going to have a few of the same. I know, I like Mr. Freeze a lot. That's not number one, but I'm just putting it out there. You know what I always think is a kind of cool one is Croc. Croc, always I always Croc. liked Croc, and I always think he'd work. Re- he can work well in any story because I think he's a good like plugging character. You can make him very over the top, or you can make him very simple and very low key, like very like you know he just has this bad skin condition that makes him look kind of like a burn victim or something like that. Mm-hmm. I always like Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul's badass because I just think he. I think that's one of the always like some of the better Batman stories are always with him. Uh... You know, I don't consider Catwoman. I don't really consider Catwoman a villain, but I do like her because mm-hmm. she's kind of like that in between character. Yeah. And the, well, I mean, like really, most Batman characters are good. And then obviously, you got the, like the Joker's one's ones you just Joker's good no matter what. Yeah. And he's kind of like Lex Luthor. You can, for a while there, you can go like, well, you know what? I, you know, it's like I see him so much, but then you kind of realize, you know, when you really think about, it, like, well, that's the, those characters really like fit well. With, like, you there's know. a reason we see him so much. Yeah, there's a we reason. don't need to see him as much as we do, but there's a reason why you don't really complain when they are. Because you know, it's just like cause that's. I always think Lex Luthor was Superman. I know it's not Batman, but mm-hmm. you know, when you really do think about it, it's like because Lex Luthor's supposed to be like the pinnacle of human beings, mm-hmm. and then Superman's just supposed to be like the god of like the universe, almost in a sense when it gets down to it. Yeah. So it's just like it, it, it's interesting just to think just the pinnacle man out there. Trying to defeat this god is pretty much the whole thing. It's like the guy who's in like the most physically best shape and the most intelligent guy out there, mm-hmm. but then he almost becomes evil just because of it. Yeah. Well, he's like you know he's the person. Well, there, it depends on what versions of Lex Luthor because there's some versions where they made him look like like uh, Donald Trump almost. Well, yeah, some of them hair. they make him like that, but like but I just, more often than not, he's usually in great shape. Because mostly he's always like he's, he's always and he's really proud of it too. Like you yeah. know what I mean? Like you cannot get to this. But like no human can get to better shape. I love Grant Morrison's interpretation of him in the New Fifty Two and in All Star Superman. Yeah, All Star Superman. How he still has like mad scientist kind of thing going on. He's almost a little bit of Gene Hackman like. Lex Luthor, greatest criminal mind, but yet he's like fucking buff and he's always working out and he's mm-hmm. all like, you know. Well, I kind of like that too because like for a while they kind of took him away from like he was more like a business entrepreneur more yeah. than like actually a scientist. I think like combine both together. Yeah, I think that's pretty awesome. But that's but um, that's super. Not, but he comes in a Batman. He comes in a Batman. Batman. He he's he's part of the reason why No Man's Land happens. That's a big Batman story. So. Oh yeah, and anything that's Batman and Superman involved. Um. So then there's for me, I guess uh, I'm gonna I already have a couple of uh, of yours. Like you know. Two Face is definitely one of my favorites, and it's more like I guess more than anything, it's like actually I want this is the one villain I always thought was really cool was Lockup, Lockup School, and that's one of those like later ones. But I always thought he, I always thought he could because I, I like those kind of characters that are they're kind of similar to Batman, yet it's just it, it, it's just like a couple different tweaks and he's mm-hmm. a villain. Yeah. It, you know what I mean uh-huh. when it gets down to it. He, well, he's technically he's sort of a villain, but he's almost like kind of still like that. Uh, he's just a different version of a vigilante, really. He's actually technically not really a villain. He just gets one of those things like, oh, he keeps on getting in my way, so I'm gonna have to start killing him or whatever. Like well, that. just because Lockup's one of those guys, he just he he thinks that the way to do it's like, no, 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 let, let's not like just like put these guys back away. These guys, it's clearly not paying, or, you know, panning out there. Yeah, I got a better way of doing it. Just kill him. Yeah, then Batman's... he's pretty much just like the Punisher of like DC when it gets down to it, or the Punisher of Batman. Yeah, they have Hitman. I think that's kind of like wasn't when like... they did that Marvel versus like DC thing. Didn't Batman fight the Punisher for some reason? I remember Batman fighting. I mean, there's probably been multiple ones, but I remember Batman. Well, I'm talking fighting, about the one like in the '90s, like the I remember one him they like advertised Captain like Seven Eleven for some reason. I remember him fighting Captain America. Uh, Superman, I thought fought Captain America. I think Superman fought like Hulk. Yeah, I think it was like Super Strength versus Super Strength. Maybe I'm wrong there. Because I always thought that was one of ones. I think like, Wonder Woman went against Storm or something. Yeah, what do we, she went against one of the X Men. That's all I know. 
But then, but um, probably for me, like Two Face. Sadly enough, though, none of the X Men like like excluding a couple of them, like their powers don't really compete to like some characters. Like when you really think about like Wonder Woman or Superman. Yeah. What do you do? Well, I can go through walls. It's like well, that's that's nice. I, I guess. I guess. But if I we guess need to get into can... a vault, we'll let you know. <laughs> I'm Wonder Woman. I'm a goddess. I can um fly. Fly. I have super strength. I'm practically invulnerable almost. Yeah. Uh, and I got a lasso. I can hold my breath forever. I got a lasso that tells the truth. She's got, and she's I also she's got, got these, a bondage thing going on. And I also got these bands that can block bullets or arrows. Not that I need them, but, you know, if I feel like it. I could actually probably just step out of the way of a bullet, too. I'm just that yeah. good. <laughs> oh, well. I could go through walls. I, could, I, I, got, I, got, I got light. I got firework hands. That's kind of cool, right? You could blow up a VCR. Yeah. I could, like, ruin film reels if I wanted to, you know? It's like I, I guess that's also why I always liked the X-Men quite a bit, too, is because, like, the characters never seemed like their powers were too, like, ridiculous. Because sometimes it's like... I, I like Superman a lot, but sometimes when you think of some of those other characters, it's just like their powers are almost like, okay, this, this guy's powers are just like too, too you know. So, sometimes you look at some of the Green Lantern ones, like, uh, well, I was reading this one, like, uh, comic. It, was, it wasn't it was a Justice League, but it was kind of like a Justice League one. Justice Society for, of America? No, it wasn't It wasn't any of that stuff. But it was It was more, te- it was still a team-up. It was called, like, Cosmic Odyssey. Okay. And it was like, where the, everybody got together. Even Darkseid was supposed to be a good guy at first, but they were all getting together for the greater good to destroy this even worse evil it was Dark Side. Who else? Dark Side, Superman, Batman, uh, Black Lantern or Green Lantern, who's black? Uh, John Stewart. Yeah, uh, Martian Manhunter. Uh, black Lantern. <laughs> that's the, the Black only Lanterns way... are the zombie ones that came and fucked shit up like a few years ago. Was he? Well, it's Black Lanterns. What uh, they what, are? What's their name from the Teen Titans? With the Starfire. Fire? Yeah, Starfire, and then a couple <laughs> other people. But um, it's just like sometimes you look at like okay, um, exclude the fact that Green Lantern just has this horribly bad weakness. He really is this man. Like, it's just making like, I can do all this and this and this and this and this. And then he's like, well, I'm going to go do everything by myself. I don't need you, Martian Manhunter. Stay here. And he just goes like, oh, fuck, it's green. And then blows up an entire <laughs> solar system. <laughs> or it's yellow, I mean. Oh, fuck, there's, they painted it all yellow. They thought this went out way too well. Well, really, when it comes down to it, like... And then know, everybody's like... And if, everybody, if worse came to worse... If you if you were faced off against Green Lantern, all you gotta do is pull your dick out and piss on him. I know, as, long, as, long as, you as long as you haven't drank any water for a while and you've only been drinking, it's like, like dehydrated piss or yeah, something. You can get me very dehydrated and like horribly like just sit out in the sun for a while. Yeah, just like, yeah, you get like just pit, like you're like no golden showers. One of my only weaknesses. <laughs> So it's just like, well, that's the only thing that was like that weak. It's like, well, his powers are like almost like ridiculously too good, mm-hmm. but he does have that weakness. But sometimes that's the one thing. Well, the movie almost kind of changed. Like, it's not yellow, it's yellow energy, which doesn't make sense. Yeah, yellow energy makes a lot better, like, you know. But then they have the different lanterns. Like, there's the blue lanterns, there's the red lanterns, there's the, mm-hmm. you know, like teal pink lanterns, where the yeah. fuck's going on. There's the plaid lanterns. It's also, it's like I don't really read much. I, green lantern. I, I'm not the biggest fan of Green Lantern. I don't mind him like in the Justice League when you're watching like on TV, or I like the like that Green Lantern like DC animated movie. Uh-huh. I just don't think I'd ever like. I don't care to go too far out of my way to like read stuff about him. Like like when I watch it in like an animated form, it's like oh this is pretty cool. But I just yeah. Well, for me, I mean Green Lantern, I don't dislike him, but I'm just kind of like I like. I mean, not, not to sound old fashioned, but I like my superheroes taking place in them cities. That's kind of like how I'm like. I kind of like. I like it with everything happening in Metropolis or Gotham well, or New ones, like, York. Like, I, I, I really like the sci-fi. Like coming. when I watch it in an animated form, I don't know what it is. Like sci-fi in a comic book, like when it gets like way too like sci-fi, it doesn't seem nearly as cool. But when you watch yeah. it like in an anime form, you're like, "Well, this is pretty badass." That's why I don't fucking read Legion because Legion's just so fuck. It just to me, Legion is everything. That, like you try to explain Legion to somebody, it sounds like all the shit people make fun of comic book people about. Well, yeah, we're from the 31st century and we travel through time and we and we're like we're, a bad version of the Fantastic Four. That's all they always remind me of. Gives a fuck, yeah. They just remind me of like they, they kind of remind me just like a, a, and that's that's one of those other things. Like, who are you? I'm bouncing boy. What do you do? Well, I'm I'm fat and I bounce. It's like, oh wow, <laughs> we're really scraping the fucking bottom of the barrel here in the 31st century, aren't we? <laughs> I know, it's just some of those things like that, so I was like, oh. What are you? I'm lightning lad! Like, oh, let me guess what you do. Lightning! Yeah, okay, that's what I figured, you know. It's just like, they're just a bunch of, like, wacky teenagers in the future. Yeah, and there's, like, Brainiac 5 or 7. Yeah, like, oh, I can't be destroyed, whoa. Well, he he got reformed, and now he's good. He's trying to make up for, like, Oh, yeah, they do, because I forgot they use Brainiac in that one. Yeah, he's, Brainiac, like, Brainiac's descendant's a good guy or whatever. But no. Back on Batman, though, like, uh, I'll just quickly crank out a couple of my favorite villains. You already said a few, like, Joker, uh, Razo Ghoul. I really like Two-Face. Two-Face was always one of my favorites, mm-hmm. just because I always found him to be 
Like I, I would just kind of like the, the, his downfall story because he was almost kind of like the same thing as Batman. Because yeah, he's, yeah, he's just as good as Batman, but then like... then he just goes totally a wall in the other direction. Then Solomon Grundy's always been, I mean he's kind of like a retarded zombie, but still yeah, I he's really still kind of cool. I always liked Solomon Grundy. I always liked kind of like the brute strength characters. Clayface to me was always really awesome. Yeah, Clayface is pretty cool. He's like probably one of my favorite boss battles in any video game. Uh, yeah, Clayface awesome. Uh, for me, also, there's another one. I'm, uh, Hush. Hush is one of my favorite Yeah, Hush is really cool. He's a newer one. character. I w- I'm hoping that we eventually will ho- see him soon, like in a movie or something. Mm-hmm. Hush cool. is a character I'd really like to see. Well, I think like almost if they made like any more of those like DC animated Batman stories, let's just think Batman. Uh, um, I think like The Long Halloween would be a really cool one to do. I don't know if we'd see Long Halloween just because there's so much happens in that each each one's kind of what Long is, Halloween cause, could actually be because each kinda, one is is it's it's a holiday. Each chapter takes place during a holiday, just about. Really, what that could be, you I'm could not probably, saying what you could do. You is, probably could do it like the same way you do. Probably the way you could do it is do it the same way they did the Dark Knight Returns, do it in two parts. Uh-huh. I mean, you could do it in smaller parts, but I mean, but I then think, you got the leads into Dark Victory though. Yeah, because then it leads into Dark Victory. Like you probably could combine them all together into two animated ones then you got Haunted Night but Haunted Night's probably the weaker one out of that whole like set right there mm-hmm. Haunted Night's almost kind of a standalone thing really because it's dark it's, it's Long Halloween Dark, dark Victory. Victory not Dark Victory Long Halloween Haunted Night then Dark Victory yeah. and Haunted Night just seems kind of like, here's a quick little break before we go into Dark Victory which is the real sequel yeah I mean you, I mean, you could probably even like sum those ones up though I think that'd just be a cool one for the animated series I think it'd be or a little, not animated series yeah. for the DC animated universe thing. that's something we almost, you almost could do you don't have to do this but what you could almost do for that one is that's the one because each one's a different holiday and earlier today you and me were talking we were saying uh, it kind of annoys me sometimes it annoys us when like like Gotham Knight they keep on changing the art style throughout it it's really just one story but they keep on changing the mm-hmm. art style and like like uh, the Green Lantern Emerald Knights kind of same thing well, they didn't change the art style, but just different writers and different stories. Yeah. That's actually one, I think, if you wanted to try that out, just try different art styles. Because the story's already there, and the story's already, I think, one of the best Batman stories. Mm-hmm. If you want to do one of those things, like each person does you just, different... you just get, like, six different teams to make the whole thing. Yeah. No, that'd be pretty cool. And then just pop them all together. Because then you could almost, like, you could make it a lot longer, too, if you got, mm-hmm. like, six different teams to make, yeah. like, all, like, maybe, like... 20 minute segments and just make it a full two hour long thing yeah, yeah. it's funny because like the, the, the strange thing too is like even though like when you watch one of those animated ones they feel like they're like you just watch like a, almost like a two hour long movie but they're only like 70 or 80 minutes long well they trim the fat they get down to the bare bones essentials which is really you watch a lot of those movies a lot of these movies when it gets right down to it they i think they really are good enough to go to if you just added like another 15 minutes to it mm-hmm. you got a full length film you could put in theaters well you could put like, you could put those in a, a PG animated 13. films are mostly always shorter anyways not 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 like 70 minutes they're usually like 80 minutes or something like that no a lot of them are like 70 minutes long a lot of disney ones are well it was, the disney ones are all none of them are an hour and a half long i thought most disney, disney movies are like an hour and a half or an hour and 20 no, they're all, they're all, I don't know what it is about animated movies. I just think it's just because, like, for how much time it takes to make an animation, that's why they don't, that's why they, they mostly never make, like, two hour long animations. I think it's just one of those things, you know, it's a 2D, Well, I know PG for, like, kid, kids ones, they mostly do, but, like. I think because they, they're, they're afraid that a lot of parents are going to go see it, and it's like, it's a 2D, PG-13 movie, how are we going to sell this to, like, a, a crowd that wants well, to see it? Well, I think it's one's, like, it, we, we're almost in that, we're, we're still a little bit past that age, we're not in that age yet where you can actually, like sell animation off to a lot of adults adults still there's still a lot of older people who live in that world where animation's not made for adults well, i think a lot of studios are just kind of like too scared to take a chance on like an r-rated film i really think you could sell off like something like i mean you need to do something like a family guy movie put it like an r-rated family guy movie in theaters people will go see that well yeah you could do that that's that's different comedy's but something, a little bit different but something like but something i think about more like serious stuff action stuff i think we're a little off from that i don't know if, when that's gonna well, happen because i really think the animation like only children from like the, about the 90s and maybe some children from the 80s growing up are the people that like respect animation uh-huh. as like an adult entertainment thing mm-hmm. but anybody like previous that is just it, in their book animations you know made for kids yeah I mean, there's some, it, like, so, so that's why like the direct to DVD one works because you're when you do direct to DVD you're just selling to the fans. That's really what that and is. And the parents go, "Ooh, Batman! Johnny likes Batman." You know. Well, yeah, that's that's the extra cash. Yeah. But I mean, like by doing that, that's who you're marketing to is the fans, anyways. It's kind of funny. It's just like I don't want to be this guy, but I, what, I wouldn't. Because it's funny when you say no. about kids. I mean, they're 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 good enough for like a ten, and it's like you know they're like ten and up. 
well, I don't want to be this guy, but it's almost one of those things. One time, like a little bit ago, I was walking through. I'm like, don't judge, folks. Don't judge. All we got is a Walmart here. I was walking through Walmart and I was getting Dark Knight R- Rises, and I saw they had Dark Knight Returns on like the family it's in the kids, kids section. section. I saw it there, long and time. I just stopped. I was, I didn't want to be that guy. Like, excuse me, sir, sir, yes. This is in the wrong pl- place, mind you. You know, I don't want to be that guy. Well, like, like when we were walking through that Target once, they had the same thing. It was like, it's like, uh... Under the Red Hood was like right next to like Strawberry ne- Shortcake or something. At least bullshit. Netflix does it right, because like all like, it's called animation for adults. Uh-huh. And that's what like all those things are under. Yeah, it's like, yeah, let's put, yeah, like, because Robin gets beaten to death with a fucking crowbar in this movie. That, that that belongs in the kids section. Yeah, it's just like, uh, I know they're PG-13. Because you, you couldn't forget about it, you're like... You're like, well, they're PG thirteen. They're clearly not kids movies. But I'm like, uh, well, it says that means technically means thirteen and up. But uh. <laughs> but at the same time, though, those movies are really a lot of those movies are borderline R because there are scenes. No, they're, they're pretty I was, close. I was watching Under the Red Hood like a few months ago, and I noticed that although when they show the whole scene with with Robin getting beaten, that you actually never see Robin get hit. It's always no, it's, silhouette it's stuff. Yeah, it's obvious. I mean, there's actually one quick scene. Just bleh, you see like the crowbar coming to the scene. You see Robin falling over. But they never actually show him getting hit. Most mm-hmm. of the stuff in the movie, it's usually silhouetted or angles like that. Yeah. So they have to get kind of creative with it through that. Then we can show a guy getting set on fire, though. <laughs> exactly. But that, that's quickly how. Well, it's funny, like in that done. Green Lantern one, I noticed like that one. I think since it's one that like the, the first... girl gets impaled. Well, or that too. But I mean, since it's one of the first like DC anime ones, there's a lot of swearing in that one. I yeah. feel like they say they're like, okay, we we can swear now. Just swear like just like because everyone's like crap. Fuck! Or no, they always say fuck. <laughs> but they're, they're always saying like crap and damn and hell. Crap. I mean, somebody says shit in that one. They don't say shit, do they? Yeah, one of the aliens does. Really? Was yeah. he, was he not speaking like in like Sh-sh-sh-sh-sh. like that, something like that, or something? Or was he? No, it was, one, it was a female alien, and it wasn't like an accent. But I was like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't remember. Saying but it's sort of like they're, like they're just like it's like like I mean I don't know like damn and crap and hell aren't really that bad of swear words like this day and age. Mm-hmm. They're really technically not even considered swear words anymore. Yeah. But it just it's just kind of funny just like how much like I guess because like like in the Superman and Batman ones you might hear it a couple times from like a villain, but you don't just hear it like from just like the good guys just all over. The yeah. Time. And there's a lot. Like, I remember like Sinestro had the line like "Your ass is mine." For the oh yeah, they always say "ass." Yeah, always say it's just it's just like they're swearing a lot. It's like as Michael Madsen was voicing Kilowog. This my this wasn't the point where you just almost like Kilowog just look at the screen and just, just go ass. Just, just <laughs> it just holds on him and he walks off. I remember that one. It did that did. I only seen it once, but it did pop in my. I didn't notice how much they were swearing in that one. Oh, like, I just a DC know. movie. And I think that Red Foreman from that 70s show does the voice of that alien they're tracking down that gets killed by Sinestro. Sinestro? That was Red... That was, really? That I was, think that's Red Foreman because I just watched it last night and it was... It's surprising some of the people they do get just for like minor parts because the guy who... Well, Red uh, Foreman's also the guy who fought Robocop. Yeah, I, I know that but some of the, but some of the people they get... <laughs> sometimes they'll get people like... They seem a little big to be doing like a quick role like that. Like the guy... I don't remember the actor's name but he is one of the bobs in Office Space. He's the tall guy. He was also in Platoon. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, and he's like the main doctor. He's like the he's the dick doctor in Scrubs. Um, I've never seen Scrubs. I know of it, but, I never but seen no. It. But he uh, he's a uh, he he voiced Metallo in Superman, Batman, Public Enemies. Huh. And he has two lines in that is Metallo, and that's that just you should like... have done that. He's the president, you know. And then from there on in, he just. Punching and kicking the whole time, and then he yeah, just, you think they just like that. Uh, almost seemed like a favor. A lot of work just to have somebody show up for that. Yeah, it just seems kind of like a favor, kind of like yeah, uh, we got the slot that needs to be filled. Do you want to jump in? Like, oh, I'm next door. Why not? Well, it's kind of like what John Candy did for like heavy metal because they're filming Stripes and like one of the guys because pretty much like that movie's made by a bunch of the guys. Like who's the John Lampers. Candy in, in heavy metal? He plays he plays a lot of the characters. He plays um the nerdy Let's guy who becomes like the big buff. Oh, guy. I can hear John Candy voice. In that uh, he plays the the ro- the robot thing that has sex with the woman. Uh, he plays just a bunch of he has a handful of miscellaneous voices he does too. But they're just like they just like oh we need a voice. Come on over, we got John Candy. Bring him in. <laughs> was he one of the aliens snorting coke? No, those like the two hippie guys. Oh, yeah. No, I think those are two Cheech, some Cheech and Chong of the, the time or something like that. He's selling kind of like that. But, yeah, but no, he does like a bunch of those voices. Yeah. And then, but yeah, but no, but they actually got like some of the people they get. It's like, it's like, you know, they got Peter Weller. They got Robocop to voice Batman in Dark Knight Returns, which mm-hmm. that's fucking awesome. That's pretty sweet. But they, and you know, some, so some of them, it's like, okay, they went out of their way. That's cool. I noticed how much they actually like to use Joss, people who are in Joss Whedon things, because they used, uh, they used, what's her name? Eliza Dushku to voice Catwoman. 
and she was uh, she was like apparently in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which I never really seen much of the show, but I know she was in that. And they yeah. use a lot of people from Firefly. I noticed like Nathan Fillion. Fillion's in like that Green Lantern Black Knight one or whatever. No, like Emerald Knight one. Or Emerald Knight. And he's also comes back in the. Oh, I keep uh, thinking of Black Knight. He comes in. I don't know. Yeah, there's Blackest I think Darkest Night. Night. Yeah, there's Darkest or Blackest Night. I think. Yeah. And then there's uh, and then there's the uh, there's he was also in Just League Doom. Oh yeah 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 so cool. Anyway. Well, I think it seems like a good place to wrap up Batman. Uh, next time we'll probably talk about Batman is in about a little over a month from now from when Dark Knight Returns Part 2 comes out. Yeah. Wait, does that, does that come out like... It comes out like the, the very end of January. Oh, does it? I thought it came out like sometime like in like March or something. No, it comes out in January. All right, well, we don't know what we're going to talk about next time, but we'll figure out something out. So. Well, I know they have... The, the, there's the Hobbit movie that comes out next week. Oh, already next week? Yeah, oh, okay. hmm. which I suppose movies like if you're gonna see it, you, you should see it in theaters. Like, there's no yeah. reason to fucking wait because those movies, they, they're, you're gonna enjoy it more if you see it in theaters. And which I heard, I've I've heard back and forth. I heard people say it's gonna be two movies, and I heard people say it's gonna be three movies. Yeah, that's just uh, to me. That's just what's like the book's not that fucking long for one. It's the shortest of all. Yeah, the book's like 300 pages or something like that. <laughs> so it's like, uh, fuck, just it's like. Throw it out there, fuck. Yeah, just like, uh, that's really, I don't know. I think by making the multiple movies, it's going to almost come across kind of shitty. I think it's almost kind of like that Harry Potter thing. Yeah, you're going you're to notice, like, the filler stuff. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. Well, till then, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunnigan. I'll see you later.